Welcome to Tom Talks. Join me once a week right here on Tom Bully YouTube channel. We're gonna break down all the latest and greatest walleye fishing tips, walleye fishing tricks, the absolute location where these fish are right now, and all the practical, relevant information you want and need. Hooked off. And look at that, just gone. For all the information you want and need, stay tuned right here, once a week, Tom Talks. What is going on guys? Today we are back with another video. This is our Tom Talks episodes. What are Tom Talks if you're new to this channel? Well, Tom Talks are we sit inside and uh, we have a little bit of an informational discussion about fishing, about past videos, about future videos, about lures, about locations, about all sorts of good informational content that a lot of times does not make the video. And you guys generally steer this channel in the direction um, that you want it to go by asking a lot of questions. You know, most of it's based off what you guys want to see, whether that's lures or presentations or locations or a lot of stuff like that. So um, today we're going to talk about one thing which you've been getting asked a bunch of questions on, which is kind of like favorite spring fishing lures. My top five favorite spring, um, we're going to call it walleye lures, but a lot of times what makes a lot of these lures great is uh, their ability to go a lot of different locations, fish a lot of different times a year, and catch a bunch of different species on these baits, right? And in my mind, that's a lot of times what makes a good bait a great bait, is the, is the versatility of it and uh, you know the different places you can take it and the different fish you can catch. So um, yeah, that's where we're going to break it down. We're going to get right into it. So um, it's a gloomy day here in northern Wisconsin. We did try to film some stuff in the boat, but uh, now we're sitting inside. It was just too wet out today. So right into it. Top five baits. We're going to start out with one which we have started. We actually started our open water season using. And uh, this is the Acme V-Rod right here. It is a blade bait. Let me see if that camera can focus. It is just a good looking bait right here. If you haven't fished blade baits before, if you want to add one to your arsenal, great one right here. Number one complaint about most blade baits, they tangle up a lot. A lot of times you'll have this middle hook come up, it'll get over the line, and then obviously it doesn't have action. This just flat out does not happen on this lure. Now, what does a blade bait do in the water? Generally, you rip it or pump it or pull it and it goes, you know, has this tight vibration on the way up and then it kind of glides on the way down like this. Very effective lure. We've been catching a ton of fish on it. Now, like I said, good lures and great lures. The difference there is you can take them, fish them a lot of different places. We started out our season on pool four in the Mississippi catching fish on this. Absolutely the best bait that we tied on during our time there. Since then, I've got a ton of Instagram messages, text messages and stuff like that. Guys are pounding fish on these on the Mississippi River. So if you're a river rat, definitely try to load up on these. And like every bait I'll talk about, I'll go ahead and link them down below. But they make two sizes, a bunch of different great colors. A quarter ounce for your shallower waters presentations. <clears throat> I'd say kind of like, you know, five, six feet is about as shallow as you're ever gonna throw a blade bait. Um, from there down to about 12 feet, 13 feet, I like this one. And they make a three ace for your deeper water presentations, right? We on the river were fishing the three ace and we were fishing it vertical and kind of drifting down or holding on some like receding points that were coming out into the channel. Now we just filmed a thing the other day uh, we were fishing up here in northern Wisconsin um, throwing these for smallmouth and we were doing very well up in 7 to 12 feet of water. I've also fished this quarter ounce and some shallower depths of the Fox River in Green Bay, um, the west shore of Green Bay and done very well as well. I've fished this 3 ace in Sturgeon Bay in some deeper water and done very well on walleyes as well. So very versatile bait. Now, um, great river bait, great bait in the lake, great bait anytime the water is cold is the time where most of us are fishing blade baits. Um, very effective lure for sure when the water is cold. And the reason for that is one thing I always say is you gotta get a lot of movement out of the bait without it moving very far, right? Blade baits are great because in a very small little pop of the rod, this thing's gonna go and just fall right away. Fall right away, right? Very effective way to fish. And uh, most of the time that's how we're fishing them now. I like to do about like a 10 inch or a foot pop with the rod, something that looks like this, where you just kind of get that bait to go. It's not necessarily a pop, I'd call it more a fast pull or a quick pull, just enough to get that bait to kind of go and then fall down, fall down. A lot of times when the water's cold, these fish, you might let that bait hit bottom, they'll come down, they'll pin it like this, you'll pull up and you got a fish on. As the water warms up and fish get more aggressive, most of the time what's gonna happen is you're gonna pop that bait up, it's gonna be falling and you'll feel Thunk, that fish will thump it real hard, right? Great bass bait, great walleye bait, great bait for a lot of the season, very great bait when the water is cold. You can fish it vertical, you can fish it cast it, and catch a multitude of species on it. Great bait all around, check them out. If I'm fishing dirty water, this one is a great color right here. I thought I had a few more laying around here. Not really seeing one right now. They make a green one that's kind of like this, gonna be a great color. Clear water, I like this. 
There's a color that's called Gobi. There's also a color that's called Big Muddy or Old Muddy or something like that. Just another great clear water color. So blade baits, great baits. That's one you've been using, having a ton of success on. You guys will definitely see more of that. So kind of in the same category of lures, these blade baits or rip baits, um, hard baits basically, is the number six Rappler Rip and Wraps. These things, no walleye fisherman spring fishing arsenal would be complete without these. Just like the other baits, you can fish these in a multiple depths, multiple situations, catch a bunch of different fish on them. One big question we're getting on this is size. I like the number six. Um, it's just a very suitable size. Probably most guys who do a lot of uh, rip and wrap fishing are fishing number sixes. They make a bunch of different sizes, obviously all the way down to like panfish sizes. Um, and then the other big question we get is colors. Where do we get these beautiful custom colors? Well, there's one place in Green Bay I go to spend all my money and that is uh, North Shore Bait Shop in O'Connell. They paint up a ton, biggest selection of custom painted rip and wraps I've ever seen. Obviously with a focus on kind of what's been hot out on Green Bay. A lot of these purples and golds, a lot of these chromes and golds, um, you know, kind of your dirtier water stuff, maybe your greens with a hot head like that. Great custom colors. I'll link those guys down below if you want to give them a call or stop in and uh, talk to Paul and he'll get you hooked up with the hot uh, rip and wrap colors. So um, yeah, that's kind of the rip and wrap where we're buying them and you know, kind of what we're using them for and stuff like that. But how we're fishing them, um, when the water is very cold, kind of in that 32 to 40 degree range, a lot of times I like just enough pull to get them to go. And you can hear this bait, obviously how loud they are, right? Ton of rattles, very obnoxious bait. And the water's real cold, I like to pull them just enough to get them to go. Just a couple, just enough to get that rod to go real quick, right? As the water warms up, generally these longer, more rippy pulls will get good, especially for a lot of your post spawn fish that are very aggressive. When you really get that bait to go shoot up, most time you're fishing this, like I said, you're gonna pop it in some sort or variety, hold your rod high, keep that line tight in the fall. Those bites happen in the fall. You'll rip that bait up, bait will be gliding down. Sometimes you'll feel that bite go boom on the way down. Other times that bait will hit bottom, you'll go to rip up again, the fish already ate it off the bottom of the lake. So those are kind of the two ways you get bites on these most of the time. We did catch fish in red wing fishing this way this year. I've caught fish in the Fox River, um, Sturgeon Bay, and the West Shore of Green Bay is all the places I've fished this. So pretty much everywhere I've been, the rip and wrap has been a killer so far. It's also a great inland bait as well. Now, when do you fish a rip and wrap over maybe some of these other baits? I always equate these big, obnoxious, loud, rattly lures um, to like the cowgirl of musky fishing. A big obnoxious lure that it, it, it makes its presence very known, right? There's no fish that's gonna be around this bait that doesn't know it's there. So when is this bait the best? When fish are active. When fish are active, a lot of times there's no other bait you can have on than a bait that just gets noticed more than other baits. And that's really where a bait like this shines. And you can also work it a bunch of different ways, right? It's a reaction bait. It's a bait that can be slow pulled and let fall. It's a bait that you can pump vertically. Um, so there's a bunch of different uses for it. But if fish are going, there's very rarely a time where this will get out fished. Another way we use this kind of, you know, in a different season, for example, is uh, outside of spring. So a lot of times we'll throw this on a real windy day, like up into weeds, right? We'll let it get down in the weeds or hit bottom. We'll just crank it, crank on it, right? Just boom, really crack that rod, get it to go. It'll go real fast, it'll bust out of those weeds, and as it's falling, you'll get this big, huge, jarring walleye bite that you swore was a pike, but it'll actually be a big walleye. So, great bait. You'll see us use a whole bunch more of that this year. It pretty much works everywhere walleyes live. Very effective lure. Like I said, I'll go ahead and link all this stuff down below. So, I'm kind of going to the other end of the uh, spectrum here. You know, a lot of times spring is dominated by shallow water jig bites. Um, or some kind of pull bait, like a blade bait, a rip and wrap, or the jig and plastics. Obviously, plastics are just hugely popular for walleye fishing, and uh, they're just getting more and more and more popular. Um, the live bait crowd seems to kind of go down and down, and that's kind of a cool thing. You know, it opens up a lot of options for um, efficiency and stuff like that. And a lot of times, we're seeing bigger and bigger fish getting caught on plastics, right? And uh, there's one style of plastic which is obviously incredibly popular all year round, especially in the spring is paddle tails. And this is the one I've been fishing for a couple years now. Here's two different sizes. One is a bait that's been around for a while. This is the 3.8 inch Kalen's Tickle Tail. This is my all around dominant swim bait right here. This one's even caught a whole bunch of fish already. It's got these little appendages. It's got the little boot tail on there. It's got a real thin tail right here, which is um, was what makes this tail have a lot of action at a slow speed. And it's got a body that naturally rolls when you pull it through the water. So that's the 3.8 inch. They also make another size which this year, which is called the 2.8 inch. They make a bigger size too, but as far as walleyes go, this 3.8 inch caught hundreds of walleyes for me. 2.8 inch 
same body, same everything, a little bit smaller. This is going to be great for a lot of our, we'll get to this in a second, it's going to be great for a lot of our northern fisheries, and we've already been having a ton of success for smallmouth on these. But in Green Bay, crushed them on this, I've crushed them on this in northern Wisconsin, crushed them on that in northern Minnesota. If I could have two colors in this swim bait, one would be Arkansas Shad, one would be Albino Shad. I like these natural colors, and if I want some color added, some bright stuff on that jig, I'll generally put like a hotter colored head on there or something like this. The most time I'm fishing the uh, Kalen's Google Eye jig in a quarter of three eighths, and you can probably hear that thing knocking in there. So most time I'm fishing this, plastics, <clears throat> very versatile, just like any good bait, right? So a lot of times the water's real cold, I'll throw it up there, or fish are a little bit more finicky, and I'll just kind of crack the rod real short like this. And what that gets that bait to do, it's almost like a hop jigging, right? And uh, basically what that gets that bait to do, it, it'll pop up, real quick and then it's slowly back to the bottom pop up slowly back to the bottom pop up slowly back to the bottom and uh you know the colder the water is the tighter i like to keep that bait at the bottom that fish strike zone shrinks way down when it's really cold so the closer i can get that thing to the bottom the better as fish go post spawn the water warms you can kind of get away from that a little bit more fish a little bit quicker do some higher pops you'll get a lot more of those bites as the bait's falling you know you'll pop it up bait will be tailing down Boom, right? You pop that thing up, that thing just slowly, the tail goes on the way down. Boom, the fish smash it real hard. We'll fish this a lot in weeds in the summer. We'll bomb it up there on a quarter or three eighths, depending on how deep and how much wind. We'll crack it through the weeds real hard. That thing will be falling. You'll get the most ferocious bites you've ever experienced when you're fishing real aggressive like this. That's kind of the cool part about where walleye fishing is going. It almost seems like the more aggressive you get with them, the more aggressive they get towards what you're fishing. And it's kind of like the frontier of walleye fishing, so to speak, right now. But that's the 3.8 inch. The 2.8 inch is something I'm very excited for. Now, I think a lot of times it's easier to fool a fish on a small bait versus a big bait, right? And uh, these 2.8 inches are kind of a, a real finesse bait. They're going to be killer for smallmouth. We just filmed a smallmouth thing on them the other day. Very, very effective. We were just casting out and slow reeling back and kind of bumping into rocks and just popping the rod a little bit. You can also jig these things, and I think they're going to be phenomenal when walleye season opens up here for our inland waters. For a lot of these finicky fish on those real flat calm days where they're up there in five, six, seven, eight feet of water and uh, you know they're not eating a lot of big stuff and they want this real small finesse swim bait just kind of hopped along the bottom like this. I think these smaller ones are really gonna catch a lot of fish for us, especially on like eighth ounce or a quarter ounce head. Very excited to be using these, but these two baits, I mean this 3.8 inch been catching fish for you know a long time for me. 2.8 inch, definitely gonna be a killer bait this year. Swim baits catch everything that swims too, you know. Um, we've caught fish, like I said, everywhere we've been. Fox River on these. Um, Peshtigo River, we've fished these. West Shore Green Bay, we did really well. And, uh, you know, river fishing, a lot of times you're anchoring in a current seam or spot locking in a current seam. You're pitching backwards and basically you'll just let that thing hit bottom. You'll just kind of pull it or swing the rod up current and that thing's going to hop up off the bottom. It's going to sit there and go like this in the current as it slowly falls back to the bottom. That current will kind of hang that jig up. That tail will just be kicking real nice on there. And as it's falling back to the bottom, those fish will pound on it, right? And uh, if you're doing too much, like, um, if you want to get your jig head weight right for doing this, kind of base it on the current. But if you pull up and it feels like you're just, you know, dragging the bottom like this, less good. You want that bait to come up and kind of hang for a couple of seconds in the current and then hit bottom, right? And it's that hang in the current that gets a lot of bites, especially when the water's cold in the spring, which is definitely you know, a time of year and tactic, which probably a lot of guys are doing right now is the spring river fishing in the current. So very effective way to fish right there. Um, so yeah, that's the swim bait, the 3.8 and 2.8 inch tickle tail. Um, the other plastic, which is just my absolute tried and true, probably caught more walleyes on this plastic than I have any other plastic in my entire life. When I spot, when I'm on a new lake and it's, you know, whatever time of year and I spot fish up on an inside weed edge or an outside weed edge or a sand flat, first bait out of my box almost every time is the four and a half inch Kalen's Jerk Minnow Jr. in either Green Shiner or this guy right here, which is Arkansas Shad. And most of the time, like I said, I'm putting that on a gold Kalen's Google Eye Jig in either three eighths or a quarter ounce or an eighth ounce sometimes by fishing very shallow and I want a little bit more hang time. Now, what's the difference between a swim bait and this plastic? obviously the lack of a tail so this thing you can see here i'll hold it perfectly still just constant movement out of this tail right this bait's always moving even when it's doing nothing it's a little bit more of a finesse presentation in my mind this is the closest bait i can fish to a live bait right it's got the same exact profile the tail is doing nothing fancy and uh, this bait just flat out catches a whole i mean small mouth large mouth wall you catch everything when you're bombing this thing around but most time when the water is real cold, I'm fishing it almost like this. Like I'm just constantly twitching the rod. 
on a slack, almost like a semi slack line. And what that's doing, it's just making this bait go like kind of almost along the bottom. You know, it's picking it up just a couple of inches at a time, maybe half a foot, but it's never coming that far off the bottom. And a lot of times in that water sub 40, this is how I fish this bait. Or a lot of times I'm fishing through fish and I'm just not getting bit in the spring. This is the one that comes out right here. Fish the lightest head you possibly can and keep that bait very, very tight to bottom while just constantly kind of popping it short, letting it hit bottom, popping it, popping it, popping it, never bringing it very far off bottom. Now, as the water warms, I'll start snapping this thing around a little bit more. Cast it out there, let it hit bottom, I'll kind of pop it, let it hit bottom, pop it, let it hit bottom, pop it, let it hit bottom. Very, a little bit more finesse than a swim bait. Obviously, the swim bait needs a little bit more movement to get a tail moving, where this bait is just a very simple approach and just as constantly, you know, you impart the action on this thing and that tail is just constantly going like that. Like I said, this is an absolute confidence bait for me. Um, it's absolutely one of my favorite plastics to put on a jig head. I'd say it really excels in clear water. In dirty water, I like a little bit more thump sometimes, but a lot of times in a lot of the clear water situations I'm fishing where you got a couple of feet of visibility at least, the Jerk Minnow Jr. absolutely gets the nod for me. Just an absolute killer bait. Caught a lot of big fish everywhere I go on this bait, and uh, it's just an all-around great producing lure. So that's that one. Like I said, the difference between a swim bait and that one, um, and I'm really trying to catch those fish that I think are very live bait inclined. Um, that's, that's just a great combination right there. So, um, that's that. Where are we going to go from here? Different category of lures here that we're going to start talking about. And, uh, you know, like I said, springs dominated by shallow water fishing for the most part. A lot of our walleye, small, everything kind of goes up shallow this time of year, either to spawn or to get ready to spawn for the most part. And, uh, you know, all these baits can be fished in very shallow water where it's the rip and wrap, the blade baits, or your jigs and plastic combinations. And the last lure we're going to talk about the Rapala Scatter Wrap. You guys have heard me talk about this a bunch. This is obviously a crankbait. Um, whether you're gonna troll it or cast it, you can do both with it. Very goofy U-shaped bill. Only crankbait like it. Scatter Wrap line is a series by Rapala. Um, but this one is definitely one of my favorites. This is the Balsa. It's just kind of like the original minnow body, but with that U-lip on there. And all everybody that fishes crankbaits talks about finding crankbaits that hunt. What that means is that bait's tracking along pops out to the side, comes back to the center line, pops out to the side, comes back to the center line. You don't have a walking crankbait if it just goes like this and keeps going all the way to the surface. That's just not a tuned crankbait, right? This is, in my opinion, the only mass manufactured crankbait that really walks a lot. <clears throat> and most of the time I'm fishing this, I'm trolling um, in depths of like 13 feet or less. And a lot of my spring trolling is done in depths of four to like 10 feet of water for the most part. And uh, basically what we're doing, we'll obviously long line these behind planer boards. Um, or stuff like that and we'll troll generally between a mile an hour or uh, you know 1.6 miles an hour a lot of times in the springtime period and a lot of our trolling is done at night as well and you can just imagine you know you're trolling at that very slow speed right and those walleyes are lethargic in the spring and they kind of get behind that bait and they're tracking it tracking it and it pops out to the side boom that's when those fish bite huge triggering quality we'll also take these in the summer and lead corn to get them down in deeper depth ranges or snap weight them to get them down deeper. And you can imagine the faster you go with this bait, the more erratic it's gonna go. At like two miles an hour, this thing's going like boom, boom, boom. Huge triggering quality right there. And the only crankbait that really does it, a lot of times you have to deflect off a rock or a piece of structure to get that bait to do that, where this bait will naturally do it on its own. Absolute killer right there. Can't say enough good things about the Rapala Scatter Wrap. And uh, clear water, two of my favorite colors is this blue and silver one right here, as well as purple descent. In dirty water, my two favorites are the orange back one and hot steel. So if you're looking to load up on a couple of color options, those are the ones I would look at right there. This bait for us this year has caught fish in Sturgeon Bay, it has caught fish in the Fox River, it's caught fish on the west shore of Green Bay so far. And in a couple weeks, it's gonna catch a whole bunch of northern Wisconsin and northern Minnesota walleyes as well so stay tuned for that but absolute killer if there's one thing at bait i'm trolling in the spring or casting way up shallow if you're going to cast these get a long whippy rod fill that spool full of like light braid and uh you'll be able to cast these they are balsa which is kind of the key to getting this bait to really move a lot um but they are a little bit lighter bait but you can still cast them as well so very versatile bait and it's going to pound it catches a whole ton it's one of my favorite brown trout and uh splake and uh anytime i'm trolling like the great lakes in the spring for trout this is an absolute great bait for cohos and trout and all sorts of good stuff. So very versatile bait, catches a lot of fish everywhere we go where we're trolling shallow water in the spring. So that's kind of it. That kind of sums up a lot of our spring lures, um, rip and wraps, blade baits, 
uh, paddle tails or jerk minnows, and then a crankbait, the Rapala scatter wrap. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video. Hopefully this was kind of a good little sum up of stuff going on on a rainy day here in northern Wisconsin. And uh, appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully Mitchell's dried off and he's ready to go on tomorrow's venture. We got a big day tomorrow. And excited to show you guys that video. So stay tuned for more content. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.